Dana and Craig Smoke. Well, you heard the highlights last night. ESPN, Big Monday, Baylor in Stillwater, and still uh, down players. Obviously, Jonathan Chomachach were gone. LJ Cryer did not play again. It, of course, it has been more often than not. Played a little bit Wednesday in Lubbock. Uh, and, and uh, you know, obviously the injuries that they've suffered. And Adam Flagler, who's been nursing a knee injury, was a man last night. And then again... Uh, James Akinjo, who who can put you on blood pressure medicine like Matthew Meyer, when it counted, despite a very bad night for him offensively, he was uh, incredible. Yeah, not incredible. He was fantastic in clutch in overtime. Baylor with a gutty win. There's games tonight. We'll get to that. We will hear from Baylor men's assistant coach John Jake is here in just a minute. Also, Lovey Smith today from the Houston Texans. And also Mac Rhodes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's sustainable that you have to get all your points out of one guard position like they did last night with with Adam Flagler. And I guess a little bit from Matthew. Matthew Meyer had, what, 13 points or whatever he had. But uh, but the, he's kind of different. But from those three guys, if you're not going to have LJ Cryer and you're just going to have Flagler and Akinjo, Akinjo ha- can't have too many more nights like that. And he's had a couple. And I get that he's banged up and he's playing through some stuff. But they, they can't go... Yeah, you know, the the advantage was playing against Oklahoma State, who's you know the the worst team in the league, but still very tough, and they got tough guys uh, on their team. They're not playing for anything, unfortunately, because the NCAA screwed them. But uh, you can't do that against Kansas. Is there no really points. a worst team in this league? Yeah, I, no, I, I, mean, I know like, what you mean. They're at the bottom and they're playing for nothing. Unfortunately, that's what makes it so impressive that they continue to play the way they do. But he made the shot that won the game. Made a shot that gave him the lead. Also involved in the assist in overtime. He was a part of any points that Baylor scored, whether as a distributor or a shooter. And uh, he didn't have a big night, Craig, but he he came up when they needed him because uh, he was not having the best of nights. In fact, did not score from the field in regulation. Yeah, it was a really nice win. You know, tough win. And uh, glad to see them get that. They needed it badly. And, uh, you know, I... I don't know about all the, the talk and, you know, Kenjo this, Kenjo that. I mean, he made the game-winning shot. That, that's all I really care about, honestly. Uh, good for him. Uh, you know, if people want to focus on his struggles, that's fine. But uh, I don't know that the timing right now is the best to do it when I understand the game that he had. But let's celebrate him for five seconds before we go back to critiquing him. Is that okay? I mean, like, that's – I've heard so much cr- criticism about him the last couple of weeks, and yet here they are. They're the number – you know, top ten team in the country. They're – second place in the big 12 they've got an opportunity to, to put themselves in the driver's seat this weekend so you know it's at the, the price you pay when you win a national title is all of a sudden perfection's the goal right and it's it's the top level or bust and i think that's kind of where they find themselves and the fan base finds themselves this year where you know i think people need to maybe remind themselves of the journey and the moments and, and what it takes to get there uh, you know, I don't know what the end goal is for this team, but uh, that end goal is more intact as of that win last night than it would have been had they lost that game. That would have been a brutal, brutal loss uh, had they dropped that one. So, yeah, glad to see them get that win. Glad to see Akinjo have that moment. And, and yeah, there's a lot that needs to get better. Uh, there's mostly a lot that needs to get healthier, mm-hmm. and but there's no guarantee that that's going to happen at this point. So it is what it is, and good win by uh, the Baylor men. And Baylor scored six points to four of Oklahoma State in overtime because uh, there were some missed shots, great defense at times and sloppiness uh, but he had the assist uh in overtime and then also scored the two shots that mattered gave him the lead and then also gave him the lead for good as well to put things in perspective and sometimes it's it, it's difficult or people do forget because last year's team was basically almost pimple free how good they were other than coming out of COVID. and not only were they good by winning the national championship they dominated most everybody they played with a hickey or two along the way Baylor is 21 and 5 now in 19 years under Scott Drew in overtime 21 and 5 they've won seven consecutive games in a place in which they were once three and 24 seven straight games now they've won in Stillwater Oklahoma State did have the nice win in Waco earlier Baylor now in two years 51 and 7 77 and 11 over the last three years now Kansas right now is better. They're atop the standings. Oklahoma, I can't, Texas Tech is better. They swept Baylor right there um, underneath Kansas. There's no question. But you put those numbers in perspective, 
It's not like they were 51-0 and they've lost seven games this year. 77-11 and in the last three years, a national title, what could have been won the year before, and they're still more than alive with what they're doing right now. Yeah, they're still trying to find who they are post-tragic injury to one of their best players. The, one of the guys who is the only, one of the only guys who, who is the only guy on the roster who does what he does. So you have to reinvent who you are, and they've done it well, particularly the last two games, figuring out who they are without Jonathan Chan with Joshua. And that's going to be interesting going into Kansas and seeing what happens there. You know, there, there's talk that Remy Martin might play, so that's maybe some more depth that Kansas has that Baylor will not. And how do they play? You know, with a shorter rotation than than pretty much everybody else they're going to play uh, down the stretch. Here are minutes played in the last two games for a team that's undermanned. Flo Thamba has played 63 minutes in two games. Kendall Brown, the freshman, 66. Jeremy Sohan, the freshman, 66. Dale Bonner played 37 minutes last night, 50 in two games. Matthew Meyer was, I think, kind of under the weather, has 52 minutes. And then James Akinjo. 78 minutes. That's almost two full games at 80 minutes. Of course, this went, went overtime. And then Adam Flagler last night, and I said this to you, Paul, in a text, kind of almost a legacy game. Sure, he was a part of some huge moments in the national championship run when they won it. But 41 minutes after not playing Saturday, nursing the knee, and he was as explosive as you, explosive as you could. Well, he needed to be because of what we mentioned about what was missing with his 29 points, which is for him a career high, tying a career high. We'll have but John yeah. Jake is here in about five or six minutes. Yeah, and you could tell he was he was getting gas at the end of that game, and rightfully so. When he missed that open kind of under under the basket finger roll he had there, I was like, oh, there, there that might have been his injury, but it, it, energy. But he he played through it all and, and was really really good uh, the, the entire night. And I, I'm impressed with James Akinjo that. The, I think the biggest thing you got to be impressed with James Akinjo is he can have a night like that where he was not affecting the game in a positive way in what he would normally say, this is this is my kind of night. But he didn't stop. It was He wasn't discouraged. It was just like, oh, I'm just going to keep chopping wood, and eventually it's going to go. And then he also, you know, he needed to maybe shoot a little bit more than he did to get out of the funk, I, I would have liked to see. But he also knew that, like, well, maybe right now is not the time for me. He was two of nine shooting from the field overall. But the bottom line, as Craig mentioned, when they needed him to make shots, he made two clutch shots, finished with six points, also had four steals, had three turnovers, I think most of those in the first half, and then also had a couple of rebounds. The two young freshmen continue to put together some interesting numbers kind of uh, across the board. But those are the minutes played. They have now four days to rest their legs, practice, tweak things, and then Kansas on Saturday night, which is a late game, a 7 o'clock game, so really almost five days after a late-night trip back from Stillwater. With college game day. With college game day, of course. Here's a picture. Armstrong, did you already show it? Here is a picture. You want to see what his teammates thought of James Akinja when that game ended? Look at that. That's Flagler on the right, of course, over uh, what is James Akinjo's left shoulder, who had the big night. Kendall Brown, the freshman. Matthew Meyer behind him. I think that might be might be Bonner, not sure, um, and or even Flo. And then, of course, another player who's uh, on the bench as well. I mean, look at that's just just that's that's part of it. And and as the coaches say, that's that culture of joy. Any team would, of course, have that kind of expression. But that look at Akinjo, kind of like Rrr! you know, yes. I, and, and, and that's a big moment for Baylor as they now well, go to 20, uh, 22, 23 and 5 on the well, year. Well, maybe personal touch is not his love language. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's not what maybe, it is. Hey, get your hands off me. Yeah. No. He, uh, and that, that's awesome. That's that, a nice win after Oklahoma State had beaten Baylor in what was the worst loss of the year. Not they've been beaten up. But that loss against Oklahoma State at home was still one you were like, what the hell happened? That is a, also a fantastic picture of Kendall Brown's hair, I got to say. Yeah, yeah. Everything he's going for with that style just pops in that picture. Yep, yep I, I, absolutely. Tonight, Oklahoma is in Lubbock to take on Texas Tech and that incredible crowd. OU now, right now, next to the last in the Big 12, just ahead of West Virginia, who lost again to TCU last night. And then Kansas State, Kansas. Remember, Kansas State led Kansas big at halftime when they met 
in Manhattan, and then Kansas came back and beat Kansas State at home tomorrow. It's TCU at Texas, and West Virginia plays at Iowa State.